Hello everybody, welcome back to year, or welcome to year 2012. Now there's a couple things that's going on here. I made this video like three or four times, and I think I finally fixed the mic. Because it starts getting choppy towards the end, but I think I fixed it for sure. So if it starts to get choppy, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to keep on fixing it. And the other thing is that we just covered classes. We covered a, a couple things on classes. But we're going to cover something else on classes. We're going to learn the static variable. So let me clear everything I got so far. So that was the main code here. Okay. So I want to make... I have two classes. One's a class of weapon, one's a class of character. But we're just going to look at the weapon here, and it's a small class here. You can see the whole thing here. We're going to add a new variable. <coughs> it's going to be the int type. Well, no, it's, that's not new. I'm going to call it quantity. I'm going to make a new variable called quantity. But what's going to be special about it is it's going to be static. <coughs> so we have a static variable int. So what does a static variable do? What is a static variable? Well, all the you, kn you know the rules of scope. It follows the same rules of scope as everything else except for one rule. It's to bend one rule, and that is that, is that it does not get destroyed when the uh, when it exits out of scope. So static variables do not get destroyed when they leave scope. All other variables do. So this is the special ticket that it receives if it's static. It does not get destroyed. So let me show you what that means. So let's just uh, make a weapon. Weapon X, and I'm going to say X. I want to output X dot quantity, and uh, let's run it. Oh, and when you're using C plus plus, there is one extra thing you have to do. You have to redeclare it, or your program will not run. So I'm going to say int. Now I can't just pick any random name like I'm used to, like you can anything else. What we have to do, we have to type in the name of our class. We say weapon. Because so if we look up here, the name of our class is a weapon. It's the weapon class. Next, we're going to use this thing called the scope resolution operator. <clears throat> I never covered that before. I didn't think it was necessary at the time. But uh, we're just going to go over a little bit now. Just use it right now. I'm not going to explain it. The next thing, we're going to type in the name of the variable, the name of the static variable that we have created. Then we can initialize it. And uh, we have to have this here. Now look where it's at. Notice it's not in the main function. This portion of the code here cannot be in the main function. It has to be somewhere before the main function in this global portion here. Notice I'm not inside a function here. I'm missing a global spot somewhere right before the main function. I can put it up here. I can put it down here. As long as it's here. <coughs> now we can run it. And we get zero. So what does a static variable do? Well, let me make, give an example here. All I'm going to do, this quantity here is going to count the number of times I have made an instance of the weapon type. So I'm going to say quantity plus plus. Remember that's a shortcut for the increment operator. So every time, remember this is the constructor function. So this is the function that is called every time my uh, variable is uh, declared. Every time I declare a weapon variable, this are, these are the things that are going to be executed. Okay, that said, let's run it. So we add one to the quantity variable. Now remember the inst the initialization here is right here for the quantity. It's a little weird. I'm sorry. That's just the way they made it. If you use other languages, it's not that. It's not like that. But here it is. So here's static. And uh, make a new weapon. Let's call it Y. 
Notice it says 2. Why does it say 2? I'm using the x variable. Well, guess what? These, sh all, all weapons share the same exact variable. They share the quantity variable. They're, it's the, this is the same variable as only one instance. Even though I have two variables, there's only one instance and it's never destroyed. So if I made this y, y dot quantity is always going to be the same as x dot quantity. Because they share the same variable. And it's and I and this constructor function was called twice because I made I uh, declared it twice. Let's say I make an array. Weapon of box of seven. So okay. This is gonna be nine times. I, I made nine boxes total, so it's being called nine times. Okay. Let's say I made box four of quantity. And there it is, it's nine. See, these are always gonna be the same. So for instance, uh let me get rid of this here. So that, that's the use of static variables here. Now, it'll be a good idea to make these private. Even though I made everything public because it was just easier to explain at the time. But let's say some clown in some other function somewhere that you hired decides to change the value of this for whatever reason. And the des I designed this specifically just to count the number of times it's been uh, declared. X dot quantity is equal to zero then you output now let's say a negative one just to be different from zero so we can know that see out quantity and you can change it too and I can say alright this could be y this could be a y See, they're always going to be the same, no matter what. The quantity shares the same exact variable. It will always be the same, regardless which one you use here, because it's static. But let's say you don't want anybody to change this here. That's what this use of private is. And I explained it before, but hopefully it starts... Hopefully it begins to make sense now. That the only functions that are allowed to use this here... These are the only functions that can use a static variable is the stuff inside this class weapon here. So so if you hired a couple idiots, you would be absol absolved of any suspicion if something's not right due to them because these are the only functions that could you know they wouldn't change it directly like I did down here. You know they can't do that because it's private now. We can't even print to the screen. They cannot change this. So these are the only functions that could do this here. So what we could do, we could make a new function called display amount and make it void display amount and you'll see that this is a common practice you'll make you'll see a lot of functions being used just to display stuff the only thing it's designed the only thing I want this to do is just to, to see out so these are the only functions that can change this value here. So you, you know that there's nowhere else in the entire code if you're making a, a massive game. This is the only s spot where it can change these private variables here. Which keeps it nice so you'll know you won't be hunting down any anything weird changing these variables. Okay. So you got quantity plus plus. These are the only two functions here because they're inside the class. So right here I can say x dot display amount and that's the end of my function here I can just add those, I gotta add those two there and I can say y and I've already showed you this, it'll be I can say box remember this is the last one, I can't use box 7 because it doesn't exist I can change any of these. Oh, by the way, if I don't initialize this, this is an exception to the rule earlier.
that any static variable that's not initialized will be zero. If it weren't static, it would be some random value. But if you don't declare a static variable, because remember this is static, it's automatically going to be zero. But you can declare it to like nine here. Because remember this is the declarations here for static variables. But it's usually a good idea to make them zero sometimes, depending on what you want to use, but there it is. Okay. And that's what we have so far for these static variables here. Now, since this variable is private, if they tried to, if somebody was writing a code that wanted to say, tried to change it, he would get an error saying, oh, this is private, so I can't do that. So that absolves of any suspicion of any code anywhere else. Well, I guess it depends on the situation. These are the only functions that are called, so you'd be looking for these functions here. That would change it. And actually, this thing doesn't even change the value. It only looks at it. So, it's a good advantage to use private variables. Like half of the stuff over here should be private. But I decided to make it public because it was easier to teach. Alright. Uh, we'll be going over the destructor next if the mic doesn't crash on me again.